Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are back on the Templar 250 and I'm gonna show you how to get more travel out of your front forks. So as you can see here, I have the stock fork here and I have my one that I already modified. And you can see a big difference in the forks, at least between two and a half and three inches of, of extra travel here. So it's gonna be really beneficial because on this bike here, the forks, are kind of short and it feels like kind of the front end is always leaning forward so we're gonna go ahead and make it longer so it's gonna change kind of geometry a little bit might even extend the wheelbase a little bit because the forks are longer so let's dive right in all right now so before we can make our fork longer we need to take our cap off i do not know the size so i use an adjustable wrench probably not the best for this because you're going to kind of mar it up but just go ahead and thread your cap off here. All right, perfect. With our with our cap unthreaded here, we have our preload adjuster. We need to take this off before we can continue to disassemble this fork. So perfect. With this, with our spacer off, now we gotta get our top cap off. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. Give me a little cooler here, has a little support. So basically, I'm trying to just put this cap in here, and this is aluminum, so you want to be you want to hold it tight, but don't don't break it. We got our cap in the vise, we got our nut here, and basically you're just trying to work this thing back and forth a little bit. There is some Loctite, so be patient. You'll feel it get kind of stiff, and there we go, just broke free of that stiffness there. There is some Loctite, so again, you're gonna just have to be patient with it. So once you take this off, you're going to have to support this here. So make sure you have a hold on it, or at least something to catch it. Because once all these threads are run out, this cap will no longer be connected. Boom. Just like that. So just like that. Now this is a little o-ring here. Just leave that on there. Try to keep this where it doesn't get all dirty and you know, don't drop, try not to drop it on the ground, get it all dirty, but that just pops off and you can set this aside now. This nut is gonna be very difficult to get off. This is probably the sketchiest part of this whole thing. Cause if I try to turn this nut, I'm also turning this rod in here. Okay, and I really don't have anything to grab onto besides this top part here, okay? So I'm gonna, again, use the vice grips, but you have to be very careful that you do not touch the threads. You have to be on this flat part up here with no threads. So I got a vice grips. And again, we're gonna try to just grab it without touching the threads. You touch the threads, as kids would say nowadays, you're cooked. So now, now you're basically trying to unthread this now. So again, righty tighty lefty loosey, go away from me. And again, there we go. That was kind of loud, but there we go now. I just go ahead, thread this nut all the way off. All right now, so they've made contact. Go ahead, take this off. So I'm not even, I don't even have the vice grips clamped down. I just have just enough pressure just to hold it still. And there you go. So now I can release this. And now you're gonna have a, a spacer. All right, let me pull this out first. Ooh, it's all oily. Okay. So this metal rod in here is just a spacer for your spring. Your spring is still sitting down in, in the fork. You've got your metal rod here, and then this is just a spacer cap that goes on either side. It's universal, so it doesn't matter if you put this in backwards or whatnot. But I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna put it back in here just like that it just clips in if it's stuck in there get a little um needle nose pliers or something just to pull it out sometimes it'll just fall right out but yeah so we're gonna set this aside now all right now this fork is still full of fluid so we need to go ahead take out of our soft vise here and just gonna go ahead and dump it out now your spring might also come out well it looks pretty good
All righty, well, we finally got our spring out. It was stuck in there for some reason. I don't know why, but basically what I had to do was if you tilt this upside down, there's gonna be this rod in here. And basically all I would do, I had this upside down and just shaking this rod probably for like a couple minutes um, in order to get this out. So it came out though, which was really good. The interesting thing was on my other fork, the other one, just the spring and all that slid right out. So that was kind of weird. But anyways, we got it out. So now, so you can see the size difference. This one's the stock one. And then this one here is the one that we're putting in. So we're gonna drop the spring back in here. And again, this rod, it seems kind of off center for some reason, but so basically now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and just drop this spring in there. All right, as you can see, our new spring is in there. So what we need to do now is we need to trim. This is just a spacer. So we need to trim this spacer. It's about 15 inches long. We need to trim it to about 10 and a half. Again, you're gonna get your ruler out. So again, this is about 15 inches and a quarter. We need about 10 and a half. So I'm gonna get my white out here. 10 and a half, right there. To use anything to cut, you know, it's up to you, grinder, not a grinder, a cutoff wheel or sawzall, whatever works best, like whatever you got. I'm gonna be using a sawzall here, so I'm gonna try to keep this relatively as straight as I can. And just go ahead and cut. All right. We've got our new spring in. We have our spacer cut to 10 and a half inches. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our extension with our rod here. So you're gonna get some brake cleaner or, or carburetor cleaner or something. And what you're trying to do now is get any junk out of these threads. So make sure they're clean. I got a little glove here to try to prevent anything from dropping down on the fork and keeping this rod up high. So try to just get all the junk, all the grit out of the threads here. So next, we need to install this coupling. It's basically just a long nut. You're gonna put it halfway down on this thing. So you want sticking out, like on the bottom, about eight to 10 threads. So, but before we do that, we're gonna put some thread locker. This is blue. I don't know yet. I, I might take this apart later and put red on here once I kinda got it finely tuned. But for now, I'm just gonna put a little blue Loctite in here and. Be generous because you don't want this stuff coming apart. You don't want your suspension to come apart whenever you're riding. So again, go down here and thread this on. Again, about halfway is perfect. So you want about eight to 10 threads sticking out of this thing. So with your coupling now installed, you're gonna have, you're gonna have to order some long bolts here, basically. They're headless bolts, so studs basically. And you're gonna cut to a three inch section off. Okay, so I cut a three inch section off, had a little belt grinder and just grounded it smooth, make sure, you know, the threads catch. And again, you're gonna put a generous amount of blue Loctite on this thing. Don't put too much or else you'll be, you won't be able to get it down. Just thread this in from the top. Come on now, don't be shy. There we go. So you now you're gonna thread this rod all the way down until it makes contact with the other one. So it should be relatively tight. Is this all turning? Yeah, it's all turning. Again, just a little, perfect, just a little bite. And again, you're just trying to grab this just tight enough to give that a little pinch. You're not trying to mar it up. You can mar it up it's not gonna be good. All right, so I'm gonna let this sit for a minute, let this Loctite kind of cure. That doesn't really cure, but just let it sit for probably five, 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna come back and finish this. Now, we're gonna go ahead and pour our oil back in. So I'm using 15 weight, and I got about 250 milliliters of 15 weight oil. So I'm just gonna go ahead, dump this back in. We got oil in it, spacer, 
our extension. Now you can go ahead, put your rod back in here. So again, try to hold this as low as you can because this rod's gonna wanna fall all the way to the bottom. So there we go. Go ahead, put our spacer back on. And now you put your nut back on there that we took off earlier. This nut just threads right on. And I think this was a 17. Yeah, so your 17, let's go ahead, turn this. I'm gonna crank this thing down a little bit. Okay, now, once you have a good gap here, go ahead and thread your cap back on. But before you do that, lock tight inside your cap. Just a little bit. A little lock tight inside your cap. Go ahead and thread this cap back on. This will go all the way down. As far as you can make it go. There we go. And that's it. Now we pick this up. And again, try to keep your cap still and you turn everything else. And just like that, you know, you can cycle it a few times. It is going to be, obviously, mine is going to be very stiff because of the preload maxed out. But that's it. You're done. Now you just go ahead and put it back on the bike. All right, guys, it's been hours later. I got the forks back on the bike, as you can see. Uh, tire, brakes, everything looks good. I could have sworn when we did this, I was gonna have to buy a longer brake line, but it looks like we don't have to. A little bit of slop, it, it's a little bit on the tighter side, but I think it'll work, because right now we're at full extension. Um, the weight of the bike is not on it or anything, so uh, looking really, really good. I'm happy with it. I haven't had a chance to ride it around though. I'm thinking next weekend I might go do some trail riding to really break in the, the forks, the oil. And after that, I'll do an oil change on the forks and just check it out, make sure there's not metal or anything in it. Overall, really, really, it really transforms these forks. I'm telling you, the bike looks different. And what happens is now that it's longer, we're gonna have a little bit longer wheelbase as well as the front end is gonna sit a few inches higher. Let me go grab a tape measure real quick and we're gonna measure the distance we have here. We got our tape measure, let's measure the forks now. We'll go ahead, stick it on the cap, all the way down. It's just a hair, a hair under 37 inches. 37 inches to millimeters is about 937, 938 millimeters. Stock on this bike is 810 millimeters. So. We picked up over a hundred millimeters of travel, which is about three inches. We got about three more inches out of these forks and that was my goal. So we're gonna take it off. So far, it hardly, I don't know if it went down at all, but right now it's looking really, really good. It's rolling good. It's got some good braking. Let's take a seat on this thing, put my weight on it. Man, it doesn't go down hardly at all. Um, maybe a little bit if I sit way up on the tank. But I remember I cranked that preload down all the way on these forks. So maybe that's not the best thing. But again, I just wanted to get it some more stroke, some more travel. And obviously if I hold the front brake and compress, no, well, you can start by breaking your headlight. Let me put this back in the hole here and rock it good I mean it's only going down about a two inches so that's really nice I'm gonna put it back on the stand all right now so let's talk about some very important things when it comes to doing this modification first thing is spring I'm gonna have a link in the description to the spring I used so that way you use the exact spring that I have secondly is you're gonna to need to get some couplings I'm gonna have a link in the description to the exact couplings you need it comes in a pack of six if you can find a pack of two Get a pack of two, but I got six of these, so I have some spares. 
Next, you're gonna need some rods, some threaded rods. Again, I'm gonna have the exact link in my description. These are on eBay. If you can get one long one, that's gonna be perfect. But again, mine came in a pack of three. I think it was like 10 bucks with free shipping, something like that. They're very inexpensive, but this is what you're gonna need. Again, you're gonna have to measure out three inches on your rod, cut it either with a sawzall, a cutoff wheel, something. And then you're gonna make sure, clean up the threads on the top, make sure you, know, you can start your threads. The spacer sets the preload. That's the most important thing. If you're 180 and less, do 10 and a half inches. If you're 190 plus, do 11 inches, okay? Very, very important to do that. And last but not least, when you cut your spacer and when you do your nut here, when you cut your threads and you do your spacer, try your best to keep it as equal as possible. You want both sides to be equal as best you can. Now, obviously, if you're off one millimeter either side or two millimeters, you might not even notice the difference, but you wanna to try to keep this as close, these two wanna be as close together as you can. You're messing with a lot of variables. You're doing your spacer. So you gotta make sure this is straight. And then I was using a table, uh, table grinder and I was just rolling it around making sure they're both as flush as I can get it. Again, if you're off one millimeter, you're probably not gonna hurt anything, but try your best, take your time, get it as close as you can. Um, secondly, when you're doing your preload, again, make sure you try to get them as close as you can together. I, what I did, I just went all the way down with the preload. So obviously it's gonna bottom out, it's gonna bottom out against this coupling in there. So that's basically what you're doing. Now your stock, your stock old nut is now your preload adjuster. But again, you gotta make the same adjustment to both sides if you want it to be a consistent feel. And that's it, and you add your oil. Again, I went with 15 weight. Since I have a lot more travel, I might drop down to a 10 weight, but I need to do a lot of testing first. I need to test it in the wood. I need to test it on the track. So those will be some good videos coming up if you wanna figure out how this is going, but Stock brake line still works. I'm kind of surprised. Personally, I thought it wouldn't work. I thought we'd have to get a longer one, but stock one is still holding up for now. Um, brakes, everything, everything looks really good. We're not gonna add a riding part in this video. We're gonna save that for when I go ride the trails, when I go ride the track, we're gonna, God dang, it's hot. We're gonna test it out there. So, but yes, make sure I personally would use blue Loctite at first, ride it around, make sure it's what you like, make sure the preload is set good. And then maybe if you're just for sure, for sure, I'm gonna set it as it is, use red. But for me, I'm gonna stick with blue, just in case if I ever need to get it off, at least it will come off. Red will probably, you'll probably break something trying to get the red Loctite to come out. So again, I use blue. Alrighty guys, well that's gonna conclude my video. If you need, if you have any questions at all, or you need any help at all, Please feel free to leave a comment down below. I'd be glad to help you out. And I will also post a list in the description of kind of my step-by-step -step, uh, what I did to get it to work. And yeah, I mean, this really, I'm excited. Again, we got about three inches. We, we have adjustable preload in here. Unfortunately, we don't have it here on the top cap, which kind of sucks. Maybe that's another modification for another day. But we got our preload adjusted. We got our oil. We got longer forks. So. We are slowly, slowly modifying this bike and I'm excited, so. Alrighty guys, well, if you liked today's video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.